Move closer. Like, you got to be, like, the fist away from the... Wah, wah, wah. Uh, wah, wah. Walk, walk, uh. Is this close enough? No. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second episode of Different Leaf, the podcast. I'm Britt Smith, and I'm coming to you this week from quarantine. I know a couple of people who have had the virus we shall not name, and unfortunately, that includes my guest and my backup guest for this week's episode. Luckily, I found this awesome guy who just happened to be free to chat about pot during the pandemic. He was in my house. I married the guy. His name is Drew. I hope you enjoy. Drew Green is a business major at Northeastern University. He is a United States Marine. Two tours of Afghanistan under his belt. He has been a medical marijuana patient up until when? February? My uh, registration, I think, expired in early January for so medical marijuana. About so, about two yeah. months now without yeah. your card? Yeah. And uh, how's it been, coronavirusing without your medical marijuana card? Not so bad, actually. Uh, luckily, I think um, Massachusetts is starting to, at least in this area, they're starting to get the recreational... Um, dispensaries open so you know we have one 10 minutes from our house comcan in millis so you went to comcan today as a recreational purchaser yes and they were keeping strict six feet distance uh yeah the uh the manager came outside so it was pretty busy uh i was surprised because uh i got there just shortly after it opened maybe 20 minutes Early morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were Yeah, there. I thought I was going to beat the rush. But um, I got out there and I got in line and there was people out there saying that they had been there two or three times in the last week. Um, so I guess people are stocking up, you know, because they have a purchase limit. Um, but they, uh, the manager came outside and he said, uh, hey, just for reference, uh, the, you know, the cracks in the sidewalk are five feet apart. So, you know. And then inside, Social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> and then inside, did they like um, ha- watch how many people came in and out? Yeah, they they were metering. I mean, they they often meter people in and out when they often meter people in and out when it's busy. But this one's by order of the governor. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I think marijuana establishments already have limitations on the the number of people that they can have in inside. Yeah. Based on square footage or something. Yeah, just general capacity stuff. But yeah, this one's for the health and well-being of society. Yeah, well, I think now also because of the six-foot social distancing thing, now that that's you know just limited to how much people they're going to allow in based on that too. But also they've got they've got a fairly full staff. They had every other register open so that you could have distance between you at the register. Yeah. Um. And then they had the queue line was spread a little bit wider than usual. Then they also had X's marked on the ground that were all six feet apart. (laughs) It seems so strange. Yeah. And so it's funny. You walk in there and you stand on this X and you just look down and you look over to the guy to your left standing on another (laughs) X and the guy in front of you standing on another X and you're like, this is not real. Yeah. (laughs) This is a movie. It's so strange. (laughs) Yeah. And now uh, we have tried to get as much as we can purchase from the recreational store because, you know, we couldn't renew your medical license at the time. And man, have I realized the difference in price on the recreational side. Ooh, those taxes. Yeah, it's like, probably... It adds up. I would say it's like 10 to $15 more. Yeah, for an taxes. eighth. Yep. Yeah, which is like, it's a lot, but it's also just the convenience and the quality and all the testing that they do, you know. I think that there's some, uh, you know, customer assurance element that's pretty valuable. Yeah, for sure. I think that a lot of people are going to go back to their 
street dealer guy. Right. I mean, yeah, with the shortage, you know, like there's definitely going to be a sh- more... Street dealer guy wasn't a very cool way to say it, was it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the kids say. What do the kids call him now? Yeah, my guy. I Your just call guy. Him my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what you call? I yeah. don't know. What do you say? What did you say in America yeah, when you homies. when you were <laughs> down in Georgia? You call him the homie. Yeah. Got to hit up my yeah, homie. Hit up my homie. We used to uh, we used to call him the the weed man. Uh, we weren't very innocuous about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to call the weed man. Yeah. English aren't so much with the wit. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I th- I tend to disagree. I, I was hoping I'd come back with a witty comeback, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we just shared that joint, so that's not going to happen. Uh, no. yeah. uh, when I went to Comcan, they only would let me buy uh, seven grams of fl- of just regular flour. Um, and then I also was able to buy like three grams worth of joints. And that's on the rec side. Do you know if they had any limit on the med? I don't. I didn't ask. I wonder. Yeah. Probably less of a limit on, on that side. Yeah. Um, that's probably why they have the limit on the rec side so probably. that they can f- supply the medical side. Yeah. Yeah. Which is understandable. But they've also got different products on the rec side. Were they selling edibles and, you know, all of the regular everything they still had in stock? Or were they out of anything? Um, I think they, well, I think that their menu live updates. So yeah. I think that as things go out of stock, it dele- it removes them from the screen. So I don't think it would even show me. Did you see that they had like a, a, a very large supply, very a lot of options? They had a pretty normal yeah. number of options, maybe a little bit fewer, but pretty normal. This is just going to affect every single industry out there. And the cannabis industry is, uh, is not, um... What's the word? Insulated. It's not insulated. Thank you, honey. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is definitely going to impact. And it's a very small industry at the moment. So it's... It's a small industry. And, you know, like, it. the The question is how much money are people willing to continue investing? Because all the, these companies in Massachusetts are backed by a lot of money. Right. Um, by necessity of the Cannabis Control Commission. Um so it's just a matter of how much money those people are willing to eat, you know, getting through this because they're going to they're going to spend a lot of money and they're going to lose a lot of money. Uh, Comcan seems to be handling it well. They had a, they had a pretty long line. It's just a matter of how much supply that they're producing, how much they've been preparing, you know, a month or so before what do you, this. You know that they're not supposed to have more than 25 people, you know, in an area or whatever gathering. So what do you think happens if they have a line outside and they've got 25 spots marked with an X and they're like, you stand here, and the 26th person drives into the parking lot? Do they have to stay in their car until a person goes inside and we move like that? I don't know. I don't know that anyone's ever going to take it like that. Uh, It was funny. We were standing in line and like people weren't rubbing elbows, you know, but they, uh, they weren't like you know standing a long ways away yeah they were just kind of like you could see like people were kind of like oh, yeah i'm gonna stay a little bit further from you yeah i'm gonna stay a little bit further from you like oh uh, you got closer man i'm gonna split the distance you know like come on come on come <laughs> you on you gotta man. save yourself at this yeah, time yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> so i mean there's people are definitely nervous it's it's, it's an odd thing in the air right it is. now it's you know, so like, strange well, um, I think that this will be good for the for the underground business, you know, like there are small businesses Definitely. going under right now, but there's also just like home entrepreneurs who are making their own edibles and growing their own weed who are going to flourish. Yeah. Right. I do wonder uh, if the, uh, I wonder if the Cannabis Control Commission is going to try and do something with uh, some of the existing businesses that are already trying to vie for a delivery business. Yeah. You know, because I'm Speed sure there's m- many of them that are. I think that there is some uh, delivery. Well, medical, there for, are on some. On the medical side, yeah. 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 But I think that maybe uh, the Cannabis Control Commission 
could possibly look into some options to either help them expand that or, you know, to license other people to do delivery. You know what um, Mayor Walsh in Boston has been doing for the restaurants? So you have to have a license to do delivery for restaurants, but because Mm. all the restaurants are closing down, all the bars are shut, the only thing they're allowed to do is takeout and delivery. Well, if you don't have a delivery license, you pretty much lost your income. So he's actually... Uh, sus- I think either suspending something or writing something into law that will allow delivery for any single eatery or you know mm. pizza parlor or <laughs> cafe or whatever, just so that they can stay afloat. Yeah. And I wonder if the Cannabis Control Commission could do something similar for medical dispensaries. It would be too much, I think, to try and enact recreational delivery right now. That's a whole other thing. Well, but to allow expansion of medical delivery right now, I think that's possible, right? Um, Cuz how uh, long are the people going to have to go without medicine? I don't think so actually. I think that it's just as easy to implement recreational at the same time. I mean, it's up to the businesses to decide how much they're going to invest in that because it's a whole infrastructure investment that you have to come up with to start doing uh, deliveries, you know, mm. like you have to have um, addresses and mapping, and you have a way to verify before they make the purchase and before you give them the product. Mm. So, you know, like there's some clear guidance that I think that can be put in place that would apply, you know, like with the medical side, all it really is is one more license to look at. Yeah. Right? Like, right. do you have a medical card or not? You know? I so. Suppose. How much different it would it be to do the government's, you know, the government ID with a license? So, you know, like if, if we're trying to, uh, you know, f- abide by the CDC guidance, which seems like they tell us to gather in fewer and fewer groups every other day. Yeah. You know, one day it's 250 in Massachusetts, the next day it's 25. And now who knows b- before it's going to be like, you know, 10. Yeah. Like kick your cousins Kids out. Kids and your children house. in one room, husband and wife in the other. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Or uh, you know, parents got to split up with the kids and you know find each other at the end of the apocalypse. <laughs> Good luck. Um, See ya. Yeah. So. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Delivery. Sorry. Delivery. Yeah. Damn that joint. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> Thanks, Comcan. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, I. I there's a lot of infrastructure investment. And so I think that the businesses are going to have to decide how much they're going to go ahead and do that. Some businesses may be quite comfortable with uh, the level of investment. Some businesses may not have the money to invest, especially with uh, the situation as it is. That's very true. Um, do you know what I just thought? You know, Pure Oasis just opened in Dorchester. Like the week after they open, the coronavirus happens. Mm. I wonder if, you know, they needed a lot of interest well, hopefully early on. they over uh, overestimated for their inventory and they actually like have a good stockpile yeah um, that that would be their best uh, advantage in this situation is if they were just opening and they knew all right we're gonna need a lot of inventory let's make a lot of inventory yeah um, just to you know be prepared do you know what I told but I don't know what their strategy is so you know what I told um My friend, she said that she had a lot of bud right now, but that she thought that it would probably go, you know, dry or bad over the however long we're going to be in quarantine for. Bad weed's better than no weed. (laughs) I mean, beggars can't be choosers. If we're all in the apocalypse right now, uh, I'll keep your I'll keep your dry weed. Yeah, yeah. Give me my terpenes. I'm all right. Yeah, you know, I told her. You know, I I think people freeze it right. Yeah, I think. Um, and I told her to make it into butter and make mm. it into edibles. Yeah. And those you can definitely freeze and keep. Um, you don't need to freeze some of them. Like you can make them into certain bars um, and and brownies and whatever. You really need like a like an ounce of weed though to make it good, is a lot uh, yeah. butter. Yeah, you know, butter is actually hard. You know what? We're we're locked down for a while, and we've got a lot of um, little home projects going on. Um, and if I had more weed, one of them would be to make um, to make some of the stuff from that book I've got, Bong Appetit. Yeah. I haven't made anything from that yet because I haven't had enough weed to be able I to know. do it. Yeah. 
since I write for a, a radio station website and I've been now working from home, I decided that as much news as I can, I would put out positive news and good news and like stories about acts of kindness because this is the kind of like social isolation and fear and distancing 